So as a leader, as John Maxwell would say, a leader is a teacher. And uh, part of that teaching environment means that we need to create an environment or a culture that embraces learning. Now, the difference uh, between learning versus training uh, is pretty substantial. Training is that uh, the sense of training is we're going to train, we're going to force it, we're going to uh, almost create that compliance-based information dissemination. Learning, on the other hand, is um, the accumulation, right? The, the simulation of knowledge or skill because I want to. So you know, learning versus training. The training is I'm going to do it to you, right? Learning is I want to bring it in myself. And it's that kind of an attitude or perspective. And so when we talk to employees about training, right? Over here on this side, we start talking about the training piece and they, they start thinking things like, sexual harassment training, some kind of safety training, <laughs> which they, these are great, right? They're fine. These are things that we need them to have. But even then they start may start talking about management training, things that we're going to do, or, or skills training, even skills training. We may be saying, hey, these are things that you need to be more effective in your job. And that's great. That's great. But when when they start thinking of things such as learning, right, that's over here, that's a little bit different. When they start thinking about learning, what they want to do is they want to learn so they can grow, so they can develop, so they can uh, promote. The learning part helps them to become better. It helps them to get to a higher place. It helps them to become, um, you know, to, to become more. And so what happens is that as they learn and they grow, they can do more. They can be more. So going back to our conversation about competencies, remember a competency is you know, what we expect them to know, be, and do. Well, that's all about learning. Over on the training side, sure, we're going to disseminate knowledge and skill. And to us, we may say, well, learning is the outcome of training, isn't it? Uh, to a degree, it could be. But uh, when you take a look at it from one perspective, uh, the training is the uh, is oftentimes seen as the employer is kind of pushing the pushing the the, the 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 commodity, if you will. And over here is the employee saying, "I want it, right? I want the training to come in." And so the question becomes, how can we have we as the employer deliver what the employees actually want? Hmm. That's this little section right in here. How do we create this mashup where what we're providing to the employees is what they want? That's that learning organization. So what's that? Yes, we do need to have the structured training. We need to have the safety. We need to have the, we need to have that, but we also have to be respectful of what do they want? So it goes back to our question. What do they want? Why do they want it? And then how do we get there? All right. So step one, how do you create what we call the learning organization? So we have some building blocks, right? So first of all, how do you define this concept of what it is to learn? That's going to be, well, we can create some, some general assumptions. You're going to want to establish what learning means in your organization. Now, in most organizations, it's building blocks. How do you come on into the organization and what is it that you're going to learn? How are you going to learn it? And what's the process to assimilate that? Now, if you take a look at Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs says, hey, I hire smart people and get out of their way. And that's true. And we should. At the same time, anytime that you come into an organization, it's going to be new. There are new dynamics. There are new parameters, new ways of doing things. And so when you start taking a look at what there is to learn, you know, there are cultural elements that must be understood. And so part of the learning process is how can I help others to learn this, acclimate to it, and that's critical. When you start talking, look, take a look at the learning, you need to understand their position. Now, this includes their current position and also the next position. How can they learn what they need to, to know, the knowledge, skills, abilities, uh, everything that they need to know to be proficient and effective in their current position, as well as the next position? When we start looking at, uh, looking at the mentoring, or sorry, at the learning process, we also need to take a look at what it means to mentor. Mentor is where we not only learn ourselves, but we also help others to learn. 
What is our process here? Who's expected to mentor? Who helps other people? How do we share knowledge? And this gets into number two, share. So there's the learning, and then there's the sharing. When we get to the sharing process, this becomes a cultural element. Uh, what's okay to share, what's not okay to share. There are some situations here that, uh, you know, there may be some things that it's not okay to talk about. But in most cases, when we start talking about what's okay to share, you know, or what is recommended to share, this is where we start talking about the need to cross-train. How do we share what we do with other people? In many organizations, it's a one person does one thing and they obtain all the knowledge. And why do they keep all that? Because to themselves, if they keep it, they're the only ones that knows how to do it. And if they're the only one that knows how to do it, then they're very important and you can't fire them if they are the only one that knows how to do it. In the organizations that are learning organizations, everybody knows how to do everything and then you can swap people around and you actually become a lot more valuable that way. The ones who uh, keep it to themselves actually become less valuable because they, they, they don't share. They're, they're not a team player. So, you know, number one, as we share, how do you cross train each other? Uh, number two, how do you work as a team? Sharing that knowledge is critical in a team environment. And so if you want to create a learning organization, this is where we get into the team structure. You'll hear me say the, the answer always lies in the team and it does. And so if you want to get together, this is the facilitation of the team coming together, uh, analyzing the problem, analyzing the situation, learning from each other and saying, how can we do this better? Now, part of the share, the third part of the share here is to share what has been learned in the past. So this is what I'll call the history. Now, part of this history will lead into our, my third point here too. So we need to be able to share enough history so that we don't repeat past mistakes. Uh, if it's been done in the past, how can we share that with others so that we can learn from the past to avoid or at least save time in the future? All right, so number one, define learning, build it in, create the position, mentor it. Number two, share. Number three, mistakes. I'm going to put here tolerance. We need to build in a tolerance for mistakes. When I talk about having a mistake rich environment, uh, understand you know, in, in uh, industries such as healthcare, uh, we need to be cautious about that, right? Too many mistakes and that starts to get into quality of care, starts to get into uh, costing people's lives. That's, that's problematic, understandable. However, mistakes are how we learn. That's how we process things. When we are we receive those expectations, we go out and we do. It's critical for managers, for leaders to provide the feedback so we can assess how are we doing? Are we doing it correctly? Do we need to correct something? Uh, then comes the accountability piece. Through the accountability, through the accountability process, this is where the learning takes place with the mistakes. Where are we at versus where we should be? Through this accountability process, we need to build in a tolerance for mistakes so that as a person makes the mistakes, they're allowed to get the coaching, relearn, go back, try it again. That's how, that's how we've learned. That's how we grew. That's how we gained experience. And we have to build that in. Mistakes are perhaps the fastest way for others to learn, provided that accountability is built in. If accountability is not built in, they'll continue to do the mistakes or they'll continue to make other mistakes, even bigger mistakes, if it goes unchecked. All right, so mistakes, building tolerance, creating a mistake-rich environment, again, to, to a certain level. All right, number four. This will be the final point that I shared today. Number four is time. You must build in time for learning. Learning will not make itself. You will never have enough time for learning. Learning is a quadrant two activity. When you start taking a look at, at urgency and importance, learning is definitely a quadrant two activity. It's important, but not urgent. You will never have enough time to say, well, when I get around to it or when I have some extra time, 
you will never have enough extra time for learning. You have to carve out the time. Some organizations require a certain number of hours per quarter or per year to be built in as part of their performance criteria. In other organizations, they require certain seminars to be attended. They require certain books to be read. Uh, other organizations organize uh, book clubs or they even the manager is, uh, is, is, is holding the book club, if you will. Uh, one manufacturer that I know, the, C the COO, the second in command of the entire company, goes through a book called The Goal um, to, to walk through with their managers, understanding the principles of lean. So it's up to you on how you want to build this in. But if it's not built in, if time is not made and, it's, and, and individuals are not held accountable to make sure they take the time to learn and develop and grow, all of this won't happen. So again, to recap. Define what learning means in your organization, what you expect. Create an organization where people are, are not just encouraged, but rewarded for sharing their knowledge. Reward, allow the mistakes. Create a tolerance for mistakes. Let it happen. Coach them, guide them, improve upon it, and make time for learning. So, thanks.